Hi, I'm Kelly Smith, author of Design Asylum blog and creator of Velvet Finishes Paint. In today's video, we're going to take this kind of tacky gold frame that I've painted brown and I'm going to show you how to mix custom color glazes with Velvet Finishes Paint and we're going to make this thing awesome. Hi, I'm Kelly Smith. Thanks for staying with me. Today we're going to learn how to make custom color glazes out of Velvet Finishes Paint and our clear glaze product. It's super easy. Don't be scared. Now what I did was I took this lovely frame. It's just one of those gold frames that you buy and it had this great portrait in it of a friend of mine's little boy. Well, he is about to get married and this is a, a portrait of him from when he was very young and I'm going to also show you how I updated that picture. But first, we're going to go over this frame. So what I did is I painted it with Prestigious, which is our dark brown color. She likes really classic colors, browns, golds, blacks. So we decided to update the frame a little bit. I'm going to sand it first. I'm just using a 3M Pro Grade Precision Sander. Got my little sanding block out. And what I want to do is I want to hit the high points on it enough so that some of the gold comes through. And then we're going to create a glaze out of the Rococo, which is our cream color. And you're going to see it's going to be gorgeous. So I'm going to start by showing you how to sand. Super easy. It's not hard. It's going to be loud, though, so I'm probably not going to talk. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit all these great architectural details that are in this because she does want the gold to show through. In another video, I'm going to show you how to do a frame for someone who doesn't want the gold to show through, and we're going to do a dry brushing technique on it. But for this one, I'm going to sand it and make the gold show through. So here we go. I'm happy with that. So all you got to do is just brush it down, get all your dust off. I'm actually going to hold it up and I'm just taking a lint-free rag and I keep these in boxes at the studio. We use them a lot and you always want to be sure to get lint-free. Okay. And as I've stated before, I'm a lazy painter, so I'm not really sure I care if all the dust off. I'll just glaze it back in there. All right, so to make the glaze, uh, custom glaze color, super easy. In the Velvet Finishes line, we actually have two glazes, and one is dark glaze, what we call dark glaze, and it's the color of our timeless paint, which is our darkest gray. If you watched our How to Paint uh, Wood Furniture video, that was the color that we painted that gorgeous chest. So I used the Rococo on another piece that we've already done. So I've already got some Rococo paint open. I'm going to open my clear glaze. And you can use a Tupperware container, but I like to pour it out of my glaze container. I don't want to pour the paint directly into my glaze because it doesn't take very much and you'll be able to use the glaze for another project. So find a container and pour it in. And again, Lazy Girl Painter, I don't use measuring spoons and all that, but I will tell you this, if you have a big project and you're mixing small batches of glaze as you go, be sure to do measurements because that way your glaze will be the same color every time. But for this project, I'm only going to use about a third of the glaze that's in the container, so I'm going to pour it into another one. And I'm not going to measure this out. I just, I'm going to pour eh, about that much in there of the Rococo. And then, oh, I need a lid. Then I'm going to shake it up. <clears throat> if it's too dark, I'll add a little bit more glaze. If it's too light, I'll add a little bit more paint. This is not rocket science, and I don't make big work of the formulas. So, yeah, color looks pretty good. If it's not dark enough when it goes on, you can always go over it a second time. So, when you shake the glaze, and you do need to shake it, it foams. So, give it a second to rest and the foam to go away. But that's just part of the glaze. The glaze acts like a sealer. So, it's really awesome. But you don't want to paint with foam, so let it rest for a sec. All right, I'm using just an inexpensive chip brush that I picked up at Home Depot or Lowe's. And all I need to make this glaze project work is the chip brush and a rag. Because what you're going to do is you're going to paint it off and drag it, paint it on and drag it off, I should say. All right, so we've got our Rococo custom-made glaze. And I'm just taking my chip brush and pouncing it down. This 
frame really has great detail on it. So just slap it on there. It's a lot thinner than the paint, so it may seem a little runny to you. Don't let that scare you. And then just take your lint-free rag. That is important. You can buy boxes of them at Home Depot and Lowe's. And just start dragging it back off. Now, one thing you don't want to do is if you do the glaze and you don't have it on dark enough for you, don't start trying to put, back, put more on it now. Let it dry and just do another entire another set of it. And if you just really hate what you've done, you can always just paint over it. I talk to a lot of people that are just really afraid of glazing. They think it's really hard. And it's really not as hard as it sounds. I was intimidated myself, <clears throat> but I promise you this is so super easy. And like I said, if you're unhappy with it, you can paint over it. Spray a little bit of ready on it, repaint it, and start again. But I promise it's easy and you can do it. Just remember to work. If you can do an entire side of a piece at a time, you're better off because sometimes it is a little bit hard to make sure that you've got everything uh, smooth. If you have to do it in sections, that is a little bit harder. Not, not doable by any stretch, but it is a little bit harder. So if you can do an entire side or say from one point to another point that makes a good line of break, then you want to go there. Don't just stop in the middle if you've got good lines on a place to to stop. And just keep dragging it off with your rag. Okay, now at this point there's beading in the center, so I'm going to hit that real quick. I've got the outside done. And this will only take a minute. Okay, I feel pretty good. I think I'm just about done, but I'm going to give it a good look over, and if there's any spots, I probably can fix them real quick before it gets good and dry. I've got fingerprints on this one, and you know, I paint with my finger a lot. You can fix little spots just super easy. Let's see what this side looks like. You can use your chip brush again, but if you do and you're fixing a part that um, didn't have as much glaze on it as the rest of it, make sure your brush is pretty dry. Because if not, you're going to reactivate the glaze and you're going to drag more off than you're putting on. This is such a cheat and such an easy way to do it. You can always pull your base coat paint back out, dab sub on your finger, and go over an area that you're not happy with the way the glaze looks, and then come back and glaze it again. All right. Pretty happy with the way this has turned out. I love it. So now I'm going to show you what I did to the portrait. You're not going to believe it. Okay. So, we've got our frame painted and glazed. We sand it in between, it looks gorgeous. But now, this is a super cool part to me. I'm gonna take the dark glaze and I'm going to actually glaze the portrait. Now, I told you, this, this kid's like 26 now. He's about to get married. But his mom wants to hang this back up, so we've changed up the frame. And we're going to darken up this portrait. It was really light, it's beautiful, but it was very white, which is really not her style. She likes dark and um, really deep, rich colors. So the dark glaze is going to be just the thing. Woo. Now this actually already has two coats on it. I've already done this once, and she's like, make it darker, make it darker. So we're going to make it darker. Okay, so again, I've got my chip brush. And I'm just going to put it on and drag it off. And this I am going to work in sections. Remember to have your 
rag completely. Wad it up in your hand. You don't want little tails running through because it'll make a line in your glazing. We're not really trying to make a statement with this glaze. We're just trying to darken this up and make it more her current style. But we do have to work fast. So we don't want to create lines. Ooh, it makes me nervous going over his cute little face. And start with the line that you finished on before. Don't start back with the outside and work in. Because remember, your drying time is super quick on the glaze. All right, probably one more good width of glaze and And this portrait had actually gotten scratched too, so I took a little bit of the Velvet Finishes paint and made a custom color and, and repaired the, the damage on it and can't ever tell it was done. All right, what do you think? I think it turned out pretty cool. Looks like maybe a little dab right there. I love it. We're going to pop it in that frame as soon as it dries and show you the finished product. All right, here's our frame. The Rococo over the Prestigious, and I, I do love this. It's gorgeous. All right, let's look at our portrait. I absolutely love this. Three coats of the dark glaze took this really white, almost childlike looking portrait and has turned it into something that has a little bit more elegant feel to me. So let's see how it looks with the frame. I'm just going to hold it all up together. I'm not going to get it in there exactly. I just want to get the feeling, see if I like it. You know what? I don't love it. No, I don't. I think what we need to do is to take the frame and just darken it up. Although I really like the Rococo glaze on this, I think it needs to be a little bit darker to work with that portrait being so dark. So let's just add some dark glaze to it. It's going to be simple. So I've got my chip brush from when we glazed little Patton. And I'm just going to stab, a dab, not stab, I'm going to dab a little bit of this on. And you know, this could be a good time to use a rag to put it on, but since I've already got my brush loaded up, I'm just going to go ahead and, and darken it back up some. I think the handler, aka Kim, will be a little bit happier. It's a little dark. And we could actually do this in kind of a dry brushing technique and not rub it off. So to do the dry brushing, just make sure that you don't load your brush up too heavy. You want it to be dry, basically. So you barely put it on the tips and you just load it in. And again, you want to pounce it into all that architectural detail. And that's what makes it so pretty. And when you do something like this, you do want to go in one direction. Now, I've talked about with the paint how you can do slip slap and get it on there going every different direction. When you do a project like this, it'll have a tendency to show. So it's best if you go in one good direction. I can tell I'm already liking this. And dry brushing is super easy. You can also do it on furniture. I'm going to go ahead and get this inside. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Uh-oh. Can't see what I'm doing here. But I'm going to go ahead and grab this in there. And I think the thing to remember is 
above all else is it's just paint. You know, if you do something that you don't like, you can fix it. It's just not that big of a deal. Don't be afraid to experiment and layer colors and distress and do all kind of fun things because whatever you don't like, it's easy, easy, easy to correct. So the Velvet Finishes paint has kind of a low matte sheen finish. It feels really smooth, which is where the, the name Velvet came from. But the glaze has a shine to it. So it also can <clears throat> lend itself to a little, little bit of a dressier look, which I really like. Okay, our frame is dry. We've added the Rococo and the clear glaze, mixed a special uh, formula of that, and then we went back over it with the dark glaze because it was a little too light for the portrait that we had created, which we had glazed. So let's look at it dry. Oh, I think this turned out fabulous. She's really going to love it. Like I said, it was really white and just really not her style. So this she's going to love. And this probably took 10 minutes to dry, so super easy. Here's our frame. I love the dark glaze over the the brown base. The dark glaze is actually the timeless color and that's a gray so it has this really nice good neutral uh, look to it now. Let's see what it looks like together. What do you think? I think I love it. She's gonna love it. I hope you learned a lot on our video today. Be sure to check out the Velvet Finishes website. All our social media links are on there. You can pin with me. You can tweet to me. You can stalk me on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's a link on here. Follow our blog. We've got lots of great things going. And we sure hope that you'll let Velvet Finishes color your world.